It's common to hear people describe themselves or be described as black British. But can you be black and English? That was a discussion prompted by Labour MP David Lammy on LBC today. And he had an interesting and challenging conversation with one caller. Let's take a look. You keep saying that you are um, African Caribbean, uh, which is fine. But how can you be African Caribbean and English? I couldn't be African. I'm English. But I certainly could not call myself African Caribbean. You could be Irish, though. You could have Irish. No, I'm not bits. Irish. Yeah, I'm but not you could Scottish. be. You could be. You no, could I'm have. not, because I have looked my name right the way back to the Middle Ages, my maiden name, and um, I'm Anglo-Saxon. Great. Uh, but you will never be English. You are African Caribbean. But why? So, why? Why will I never be English? Because you're African Caribbean. Now, the caller there is saying that it's impossible for David Lammy to be English because, essentially, because he's black. Um, that also includes his children. And she's saying even though Lammy was born in England, even though his children were born in England, they can never be English. That's the position she's putting forward, and not in a very sensitive way. She's saying, you can never be English because you're African Caribbean. Let's see how David Lammy responds. Britain, uh, 400 years ago, started going out into the world. It yeah. colonised and conquered a lot of the world. Mm. A lot of the world has ended up coming back to the mother country. My parents were part of that generation mm -hmm. who came from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. uh, when I took a DNA test, I actually had Scot in, Scot, Scottish in me, probably mm -hmm. because as a result uh, of that, someone somewhere, uh, frankly, got their leg over uh, uh, with one of my ancestors and I've mm -hmm. got Scottish blood running through me. Uh, I've said that gently, but it could have been horrendous. Let's be clear about that. Mm -hmm. Um uh, and so, and, and, and here I am, having grown up in this country, mm -hmm. have been born of this country. And mm -hmm. actually, the truth is, it's a myth that there's one English uh, uh, ethnicity. There's not, because England has always been a country in which um, um, Huguenots, uh, uh, Danes, mm -hmm. all sorts of people have passed through. So when you say you are English, I'm not saying that that doesn't mean something to you and matter hugely. It does. Uh, because there, there, there are probably, as you put it, uh, years and years, hundreds of years of experience of that. But it is to say that uh, for me, the fact that I was born here and the mm. fact that my sensibilities are English mean mm. that I want to claim that heritage as well. Now, that was such a good argument. It was so well put. It was also really respectful of the person who was calling, who hadn't been particularly respectful towards him. So he's saying, look, if English heritage to you means that you have had um, members of your family living on this particular island for years and decades or whatever, that's fine. That's your English identity. But there are plenty of English identities which don't involve that. And actually, that has always been the case. So he gives the example there of, of the empire. And he's saying that, look, um, it, it is the case that people have been English in various different places and in various different contexts. And I can be English, even if the backstory is slightly different to yours. I thought it was really impressive um, the way he put that. Let's take a look to see if the caller is convinced. Now, I'm very comfortable saying I'm British, black British. Of course I am. And I'm very, very proud. No one could say I wasn't because I talk about it all the time, about my Caribbean roots. And well, I know the Caribbean very British, well. But it's but to say that English. I'm English. Sorry? What? You're, you're British, but you're not English. Well, that's that's the point I think you're making. And I'm disagreeing with that. Uh, tell me, well, what do you think? What do you like. think? If, what? I was, if I was born in the Caribbean... As a white person, I certainly wouldn't call myself. Yeah, well, I'm a afraid. Caribbean. You obviously have you ever been to the Caribbean, Jean? I haven't. No, I haven't. No. Had the well, then you probably don't realise that in countries like Barbados, there are significant white Caribbean populations who have been there for hundreds of years, and they are significantly more Caribbean than I am. Now, that was such a good argument and such a good point. And I think it doesn't get said that often because what you often hear from sort of English nationalists is that, look, we're not racist. We just think that um, we should have a country which is white and they can have a country which is black. Everyone else gets to have an ethnically homogenous country. Why can't we have an ethnically homogenous country? And what it completely ignores 
is that actually there are loads and loads and loads of countries which are way more ethnically diverse than Britain. This assumption, oh, Britain, Britain is this really multicultural place and everyone else gets to have ethnic homogeneity. Obviously, I don't think ethnic homogeneity is a good thing, by the way, but arguing on their own terms, you know, much of the Caribbean, Brazil, the US, all way, way more um, diverse in terms of, of heritage and race than England is, right? So uh, I think that was so well put. And clearly the caller just hadn't really thought of that. She'd assumed that when she's talking about the Caribbean, everyone is what she thinks of as a Caribbean person, which is someone with the same skin tone as David Lammy. Actually, he tells her that's complete nonsense. You've really got you know, the wrong end of the stick there. Now, let's keep watching because you, you're probably not going to be surprised, but she does get really racist. And again, you're not going to be surprised because David Lammy deals with it really well. Well, all didn't I can know say that, is you? the whole world is polluting everybody the way it's what, going. What, what's that phrase, polluting? It is. Why is it polluting, Jean? Because you are what you are. But, you are where but, you are. But, 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 but you, hang on, Jean, Jean, Jean. Your I don't, inheritance. Jean, it's Jean, your inheritance. Jean, I can tell that you are more senior than I am in age. So I want to be polite. No, don't in, do that. In don't this conversation. That. Well, that, that's how I was brought up, that you're polite to your yeah, seniors, yeah, Jean. But yeah. what I'm saying is the word pollution. Mm-hmm. What, where's that word pollution come from? It's a very negative way. Well, to, I'm sorry to, for, to, for that, to, but, but I'm But it is negative. To, it's a negative way to describe the fact that people meet one another, they fall in love, they have mm-hmm. kids, they mm-hmm. move borders, sometimes mm-hmm. through war, sometimes through economic reasons, and they become what they become when they are of that country. Mm-hmm. And just as you can be in America and you can mm-hmm. be African-American uh, 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 or you can be Italian-American or mm-hmm. you can be Irish-American, uh, how is it that here in England you can only claim that Englishness effectively, Gene, if you're white? really really well put again I, I want to bring in ash here because i mean as well as you know i was just looking in saying that was that was a very well done argument by david lammy there to quite a you know it seems quite a racist caller what do you make of the broader issue there because what david lammy is doing there which is to say no englishness can be an inclusive identity it doesn't have to be tied to whiteness to some degree cuts against what some progressives say because i often hear people on the left say look no britishness is an inclusive identity that's why we we're you know, more comfortable with it than Englishness. And Englishness, they say, no, Englishness is quite white. And that's why we're not comfortable with it. I mean, what strategy do you think is right to say that, yes, Englishness is racist, so we should reject it or do what David Lammy is doing, which is fight for an inclusive Englishness? Okay, first, I'm going to quote somebody surprising. I'm going to quote Enoch Powell, who I actually think was right on this thing, which is the life of nations is lived largely in the imagination. So rather than trying to find something fixed and unmoving and true, the question we always have to ask ourselves is how is the nation being symbolized, imagined, constituted and thought of? And that's something which, of course, has got uh, latitude as well as constraints. And I don't think that politics has dealt with that hybridity very well. And when I want to find interesting answers to this question of Englishness, Britishness, people of colour and diaspora, I don't turn to politicians. I turn to artists and I come back again and again to uh, one of my favourite MCs, AJ Tracy. And I really recommend, even if grime is not your thing, listen to the song Force Nine, because there's this verse, which is essentially like a Stuart Hall verse right it starts with i play for an england squad and i'm with an england squad goes on and on and on and then it's like um in trinidad fam i'm the english fob white air ones in an english top and it's about not saying i'm english i'm white and it's also not saying i identify with a very narrow definition of englishness it's through the lens of a english art form i.e grime which has come from diaspora cultures um, and also has its origins in jungle emceeing through that combined with the diversity within sport and sportswear culture defining in Englishness which is also outward looking hybrid Trinidadian black all of these things and so rather than trying to close down I think these questions and, and produce these exclusionary categories what he does within this verse is sit right within them and celebrate them and so I think that this is what I mean by there's a certain richness and uh, peace 
with indeterminacy that art can produce when it comes to addressing some of these questions about Englishness versus Britishness. And when we're coming back to this question of, you know, the lives of nations being lived largely within the imagination, well, these are the things which I think create some of the imaginative space. Now, just to sort of talk a bit about national identity, ethnic identity and racial identity, one of the things which I think Stuart Hall, again, one of my favorite theorists on this, so correctly identified is that there is an assumed racial content within how we conceive of as Britishness. And Britishness itself is sort of seen as um, merely the extension of Englishness. And that's the reason why you do have nationalist movements in Scotland, in Northern Ireland and in Wales saying, well, we don't want any part of Britain at all because that is just um, English domination. And there is also a, a, a sense that England has never really engaged with its own identity outside of their history of domination and expansion and, and projection across borders, starting with its own internal colonies. Um, so I think that's why these these questions become so fraught, especially when you add race to the mix. Um, for me personally, there's no other culture which could have produced someone as obnoxious as me other than England, right? It's also something which I find so funny, which is when people say, oh, Ash Zarka, you hate Britain. You know, I did two useless degrees. I did two English literature degrees, and it's because what well, I love the English language because I love English literary history and I also love formerly colonized and indeed at the time colonized subjects who took that English language to articulate resistance to the British Empire I love that except I don't feel the need to essentially litigate or argue the extent of my Englishness with idiot racists because precisely they're idiot racists what I would rather do sit within that indeterminacy in a way that AJ Tracy does in a way which is just so dynamic and so fun and experience it. I don't have to argue it with tossers. Mm. I mean, in a way, I'm quite in favour of arguing with tossers. You know, <laughs> I, I saw, you know, one, one of the big so social media responses to that was it was irresponsible for LBC to allow that person on. Why did David Lammy, you know, bother with the argument instead of cutting her off? And I think my position there is, look, even though, you know, I, I don't think anyone should be forced to subject themselves to, to that kind of conversation. Of course, of course, you have every right to say, I'm not having this conversation. But if someone like David Lammy does want to have that argument publicly, I think, you know, all power to him because the caller there wasn't actually a marginal person. I think she was probably expressing quite a reactionary view, which many people in the country share. And by having that very persuasive, very sensitive conversation, between David Lammy and, and that caller, I think maybe he did persuade some people. And I think that probably, you know, is a good thing. So I can, you know, I, I can see why it's an uncomfortable position for someone to be put in. But the way he did that, I think probably did more good than harm. Mm -hmm.